Look, I'm sorry for the douchey title, but today I want to share how I went from zero to a full-time YouTuber. And I was actually asked to tell this exact story to 2,500 people at the UTS Startup Summit. And so, because I'm lazy, I'm just going to share that footage with you instead of telling you. Pull it up, Jamie. This is so cool. I'm used to just speaking to like a camera and so there's no one there. It's awesome to actually speak to people. But I want to take you all back to 2015. I'm 14 years old. And one day I wake up and I decide, you know, why don't I start a YouTube channel, you know, as you do. Now, it's kind of random because I had no passion, I had no YouTube knowledge, I had no plan. All I knew was that a couple of months ago, my cousin had posted a video and she had got like 20,000 views on that video. And I was like, well, if she can do it, maybe I can too. Why not? Give it a go. So I set about creating my first ever YouTube video. Grabbed my Windows 7 laptop and iPod, yes, iPod Touch, um, and watched a bunch of YouTube tutorials, figured out how to record the video, and then I recorded my first ever YouTube video. And people sometimes ask me, Marcus, what was your first ever YouTube video like? <laughs> I want you to imagine the worst YouTube video you've ever watched in your entire life, yeah? Now multiply that video's badness by about 100x and you're somewhere in the vein of my first YouTube video. If you don't believe me, I've actually got a screenshot of it on screen. It was recorded in 480p because I had no idea how recording software works. And for those of you who aren't nerds, that is like incredibly blurry. Massive black bars because I got the resolution wrong. I was using my laptop's internal audio mic for the audio. So those of you, you know how bad laptop mics are nowadays. Imagine back in 2015 on a Windows 7 laptop. It was atrocious. But despite that, I learned from it. And for some reason, I then made another video next week. And then another video the week after. And then another video the week after, and then another one. And they all sucked. But I was learning. And so I kept at it for over the next couple of months, posting videos after videos after videos, and they all flopped. But I became addicted to YouTube. It was kind of like a, like a puzzle that I wanted to crack the algorithm. So I kept learning, I kept posting, and I posted videos about Minecraft, I posted videos about Star Wars Battlefront, I posted Warframe, I posted CSGO, I posted Mountain Blade, awesome game by the way, if no one's tried it. Um, I posted all of these different videos, and most of them all flopped. And so I got to a point where I realized, you know, there's these other YouTubers who are posting videos, and their videos aren't getting four views, so maybe I should just like look at what they're doing and then do that instead. So I started studying these other YouTubers to try and break down what they were doing and how they were having their successes. And I spent so much time obsessively doing this at one point that I spent so much time studying these British YouTubers that I actually developed a mild British accent, which was it's very embarrassing if you go back and watch some of my older videos. But if we fast forward a bit, if we go to my one year YouTube anniversary, I'm still an abject failure. Like, I really suck. Like, I've posted 65 different videos at this point. I'm 15 years old. I've tried 11 different games on my channel. I've tried 15 different formats and styles of video. And as a result of all of that work, I've gained a whopping 150 subscribers. Thank you. So I was a complete failure. But something interesting happened over the course of that year. And that was, I became passionate about doing YouTube. Now that might sound obvious and stupid, but I point that out because when you find those things that you can be passionate about, those things that when you're doing them, it feels like fun and looks like work to other people, you can become one of the best in the world at that thing. And when you become the best in the world at things, pretty cool things happen. Now, it's gonna suck at times. One of the things that I really struggled with was embarrassment. I was terrified that my friends were going to find out about my channel and be like, you know, this dude's just some loser who's desperate for attention and social validation. And believe it or not, that's not the kind of thing that makes people invite you to parties. I also thought, you know, people will find my videos and just be like, why is he spending so much time on this thing that obviously sucks? No one cares about it. Look, he's got 150 subscribers. I think it's interesting because I never actually really got over those feelings. Like, I still had those insecurities, but I did it anyway. And I think that's kind of an interesting thing I learned, is you don't have to not feel that way. You don't have to be completely confident. You, just have, you can feel those feelings, but just do it anyway. And when you do that, sometimes it can lead to a kind of cool place. So for me, what that's led is we fast forward today. I'm 22 years old, and I took that first gaming channel I told you about in the beginning that took a year to get 150 subscribers on. 
Uh, that went to almost 25 million views, and when it was at the peak of its activity, it was evaluated to be worth $120,000. Thank you. As a result of those YouTube experiences, I also got to do some pretty cool jobs, including becoming a chief uh, marketing strategist at one of the biggest agencies in my city, which is really funny because aside from YouTube, I didn't even have a marketing degree, right? Um, and now I'm basically a full-time YouTuber. I have another channel that I work on. And I mean, I, that's also led to me starting a business, which, and everyone's like, you know, sometimes your parents might be like, you know, you can't actually do that for a living. Well, last month, not to flex, but last month, my channel made more money than the average Australian medical doctor makes. Thank you. And more importantly, I get to do that while working on something I'm passionate about, being my own boss, and I can be anywhere in the world as long as I've got an internet connection. Now, do I share all this because I'm trying to flex, because I'm some kind of big deal? The answer is no, right? The 14-year-old me did not predict any of this. What I'm trying to do, though, is just illustrate that there are real alternative paths to the traditional paths that maybe sometimes it feels like we're pushed down. Remember that to begin with, whatever you do is gonna suck. It's just gonna, that's just how it works, right? But I want you to push through that if you can. Push through and try it for at least 30 days every single day. Because every successful person who is successful at anything, every successful YouTuber, their first video sucked. Every successful business owner, their first product probably flopped, right? So just push through that because you never know where it could lead. It could lead somewhere pretty cool. I've been Marcus Jones. Thank you very much. Now, I know it's easy for me to stand up there and be like, oh, I used to suck, but now look at how handsome and brilliant and humble I am. But I hope that clip you just saw proves to you that you don't need to figure it out right away. Just because your channel hasn't blown up overnight doesn't mean you're not cut out for YouTube or that everyone hates you. But if you'd like some more technical advice on like what actually I did that worked for me, click the video on screen where I help one of my other students monetize his new YouTube channel in just 21 days. I literally break down every step and give you real examples. So hopefully you can apply that process and blow up your own channel too.